Hi, my name's Craig, and today we're going to be looking at some of the inputs and outputs we can use with the Microbit microcontroller. In this video, we will look at how you can create some elements of a smart farm using a Microbit microcontroller. I primarily use balsa wood to create this model, however you could use cardboard or even a 3D printer if you have access to one. In this example, we'll be separating cattle into two distinct groups. This could include cows, horses, sheep or any other livestock. As you can see in my example, I'm using goats. Each goat has a micro bit attached to it using a bracket that I've printed on a 3D printer. The bracket holds the battery pack as well as the micro bit. In the real world, these chips might be attached to an ear tag or perhaps worn on a collar around the animal's neck. There are several reasons why a farmer might want to separate cattle, whether it is males from females, calves from cows, or even to keep cattle in their social groups. Cows in particular are quite social animals and will put on more weight and therefore be more valuable if they are kept within their group of friends. This design incorporates several input and output features of the microcontroller kit. Firstly, the ultrasonic sensor detects when an animal approaches the gate. This triggers the microbit to transmit a request using the Bluetooth radio function. I have mounted the microbit so that the 5x5 LED screen is still visible, as it will give a visual indication when the ultrasonic sensor is triggered. The microbits attached to the goats are running a different program. When they receive the request via Bluetooth radio from the transmitter, they will send back a response based on which distinct group they have been assigned to. From there, the microbit transmitter will compare the response received and open the gate into one of two different pens or cattle yards by sending a signal to the servo based on which group the animal has been assigned to. Lastly, after a pause to allow the animal to move through the gates, the LED digit display will keep count of how many animals of each distinct group have passed through the gate. Let's see it in action. As the animal approaches the gate, the microbit will send out a request and we see the tick appear on the LED display indicating that the ultrasonic sensor has triggered and the microbit has sent out the request. If the animal is close enough to the microbit, in this case it needs to be between 5 to 10 centimetres, the receiver attached to the animal will transmit its assigned group number. Again we get a visual cue on the LED screen that the receiver has picked up the request and has sent a response. The microbit then compares the response and decides which way to swing the gate. The program then pauses for 5 seconds to give the animal enough time to move through the gate. After the pause we see the gate return to its original position and the counter increases for that particular group of cattle. As the next animal approaches the gate, the same program runs, however this time the number sent back by the microbit attached to the animal is different, so the gate opens into the other yard. Let's look at the code that makes this work. We won't go into too much detail about the setup, however this code will be available to download online if you would like to recreate this project. When powered on, the microbit starts by setting the servo to the correct position and initialising the LED digit display, setting the radio group and creating two variables to keep track of the number of animals in each group, one called blue and one called red. In the forever loop, we can see that the LED digit display is showing the value of the variable red at position 3 in the display and the value for blue at position 0 in the display. This means that the value for blue is shown in the first digit of the display or position 0 and the value for red is shown in the fourth digit place or position 3. Next we have an if statement which reads if the value that the ultrasonic sensor is picking up is less than 5 centimeters, meaning there is something in front of the sensor, then run the next part of code. If the condition is satisfied, the code then transmits the number zero across the Bluetooth radio. This is the request that is sent out to the receiver. You can see that this request is sent three times. This is to ensure that the receiver actually receives the request. Next, the microbit shows a tick on the LED screen, pauses for five seconds, and then clears the screen. Now let's switch to the receiver to see what code is running there. Remember that the transmitter has sent a request which was just the number zero. This code begins by listening for a number. When it receives that number, it then checks the signal strength of the number. 
the Bluetooth signal strength ranges from minus 40 to about minus 125. If the signal is greater than minus 45, the receiver sends back the number that represents the group the animal has been assigned to. The microbit then gives a visual cue that the code has been executed by displaying an X on the screen. Then it pauses for one second before clearing the screen. Switching back to the transmitter, we now have another block of code that listens for a number to be sent. When the microbit receives a number, it compares the number using two if statements. Firstly, if the number received is equal to 1, the first section of code will run. However, if it is equal to 2, the second section of code will run. The two sections of code are very similar. Firstly, the microbit sends a signal to the servo to open the gate to either 65 degrees or 115 degrees. Next, it pauses for five seconds to allow the animal to pass through. Then the code updates the variable for the number of animals that have passed through, red for one and blue for two. Lastly, the microbit sends a signal to the servo to return the gate to its original position. And now the code is ready to run again. In order to create this project, I have followed the eight stages of the iSTEM engineering design process. Define the problem, identify the constraints, brainstorm possible solutions, design your solution, prototype your solution, evaluate your design, iterate your design, and communicate your solution. This project fits perfectly into the Agritech elective of the iSTEM course. I hope this video has helped you understand how to incorporate the sensors that come with the microcontroller kit into your projects. If you would like to learn how to complete this activity, please visit the stem.t4l learning library. Use the link t4l.link forward slash stem to learn more about the microcontroller kit and learning challenge. Teachers, please share your projects on the stem.t4l Yammer community or the stem.t4l Facebook group. Have fun designing and coding with your microbits.